Hey there, my name is Marcel O'Brien, and in today's video, we'll be talking about the jazz singer and the end of the pure cinema. Before going into the main topic, I'll talk a little bit about the silent film era. A silent film is a film with no audio recordings being synchronized. In this era, the story is addressed by the use of title cards, written plot signs, and main dialogue lines in silent film for entertainment. This silent film era started from the year 1894. In the 1920s, or to be exact, in the 1927, a film was produced with a different style and format. This film titled The Jazz Singer ended the silent film era, or in other words, the pure cinema. This movie became the first musical film, or the first talking movie. The Jazz Singer, directed by Alan Crossland, is a 1927 first musical drama film with a duration of 1 hour 29 minutes with not only a synchronized recorded music score but also lip-synchronous singing and speech in most of the scenes. It is the first feature-length motion picture. The release heralded the commercial ascendance of sound films and ended the era of silent films, although after its release there were still quite a few silent films. Warner Bros, with its Vitaphone sound on disc system, developed this film. The Vitaphone was a sound on disc system developed by Bell Telephone Laboratories and Western Electric. The system was first embraced by the Warner Brothers, and over 100 short subjects were produced at the Warner Brothers First National Studios in the mid 1920s. In this film, there are six songs in total, which was performed by Al Jolson himself. It is based on Samson Raphael's 1925 play on the same name, which was itself adapted from one of his short stories, The Day of Atonement. In short, the film is a story of young J.K. Rabinowitz, which was played by Bobby Gordon. He loves and wants to be a performer in jazz and ragtime, but his father, played by Warner Olin, is a cantor, and he commands his son to continue and stay in the tradition of the family. Well, anyway, down at the beer garden, 13-year-old J.K. Rabinowitz is performing a so-called jazz tunes. Moisha Yudelson, played by Otto Rettler, spots the boy and tells J.K.'s father, who then drags him home and kicks him out of the house. A decade later, an older J.K., which was played by Al Dawson, followed his dream and became a famous jazz singer and changed his name to Jack Robin. He then found love with performer Mary, which was played by May McAvoy. Although many of the earlier sound films had dialogues, they were mostly short subjects. In 1921, David Ward Griffith's Featured Dream Street was seen in New York with a single series of singing and crowd noises using the photo kinema sound on this system. The film was followed by a program of sound shorts, including a sequence of Griffith speaking directly to the viewer. But the film itself had no talking scenes. Lee DeForest introduced the Phono Film Sound on Film System on April 15, 1923, which had sound and dialogue synchronized, but the sound quality was low, and the film produced in this process were short films only. The first movie that features a Vitaphone is Don Juan, which premiered in August 1926, and The Better All, which premiered in October 1926, which was then followed by three other movies in the early 1927. 
Wonder Man Lost, Old San Francisco, and The First Auto. But those movies only has a synchronized instrumental score and sound effects. The jazz singer also contains those treatments, but with an addition of numerous synchronized singing sequence and some synchronized speech. Al Jolson's first vocal performance is about 15 minutes into the picture, is of Dirty Hands Dirty Face, with music by James Vimanco and lyrics by Edgar Leslie and Grant Clark. Jack's first synchronized voice delivered to a cabaret crowd and to the piano player in the band that accompanies him, which takes place immediately after the appearance, starting at the film 17.75. Jack's first spoken sentence, wait a minute, wait a minute, you're not heard anything yet, where Jolson's well-established state Wait a minute, wait a minute, you ain't heard nothing yet. Wait a minute, I tell you, you ain't heard nothing. You want to hear Toot Toot Tootsie? All right, hold on, hold on. No, listen, play Toot Toot Tootsie, three choruses, you understand? And the third chorus, I whistle. Now give it to him hard and heavy. Go right ahead. Toot Toot Tootsie, goodbye. In the almost end part of the movie, as Jack prepares to apply blackface makeup for a dress rehearsal, he and Mary discuss his career ambitions and the family expectation they agreed to avoid. Sarah and Udolson have come to Jack's dressing room to plead with his father for him to come and sing in his place. It turns Jack. He gives his blackface appearance, mother of mine, I always have you. And for the first time, Sarah sees her stun on stage. She has a tearful revelation. Here he belongs. He would have held him there if God wanted him in his building. He is no longer my child. Now he belongs to the whole world. The primary subject of many jazz singer studies is Jack Robbins' use of blackface in his Broadway stage act, common occurrence at that time, which is now generally considered to be racist. It is crucial and unusual role is described by Charlotte Corin Willis. In contrast to the racial jokes and innuendo brought out in its subsequent persistence in early sound film, blackface imagery in the jazz singer is at the core of the film's central theme, an expressive and artistic exploration of the notion of duplicity and ethnic hybridity within American identity. Of the more than 70 examples of blackface in early sound film from 1927 to 1953 that I have viewed, including the nine blackface appearances Dawson subsequently made, the jazz singer is unique in its only film where blackface is central to the narrative, development, and thematic expression. The function and meaning of blackface in the film is intimately involved with Jack's own Jewish heritage and his desire to make his mark in mass American culture much as the ethnically Jewish Jolson and the Warner Brothers were doing themselves. The scene where Jolson wears the blackface becomes an issue in the public. Susan Goober compares the film with Birth of a Nation, which was made in 1914, in criticizing the jazz singer's bigotry, which also features white actors in blackface, and which supported the acts of black Americans by the Ku Klux Klan. According to Scott Amon, the film marks one of the few times Hollywood Jews allowed themselves to contemplate their own central cultural myth and the conundrums that go with it. The jazz singer implicitly celebrates the ambition and drive needed to escape the shells of Europe and the ghettos of New York and the attendant hunger for recognition. Jack, Sam, and Harry, the Warner Brothers, let Jack Robin have it all, the satisfaction of taking his father's place and of a conquering the Winter Garden. They were perhaps unwittingly dramatizing some of their own ambivalence about the first generation Americans own their parents. Well, with this film, we can learn that we do not have to stay on the track and just follow the rules. Jazz singer shows that by using a new technology can make a big difference. So we need to make a new technology? No. What I mean is that by stepping out of the track a little bit and being different sometimes make us stand out a little bit more. In this film, they are being different from others with the new technology they have which is called Vitaphone. Despite from the being different thing, what I learned is that our movie is not only to make other people entertain, but also for us to express our emotion, feelings, and ideas. We do not have to always think about what other people want, need, and love, but we also need to think about what ourselves need, want, and loves. And that is all what I got for you guys today. Thank you for listening. 